Okay. Hi, welcome to the Fairy Whispering podcast. Today, my guest is Shifra Bradigan. She's talking to me from Oregon today, and Shifra has known since she was, since birth, that she's a witch. And um, she's had many encounters with Fae and other beings since childhood. And I discovered Shifra's work through her brilliant YouTube channel, Shifra's Magic Alcove. And um, I've really appreciated coming across her work because I see her as a very down to earth, transparent person with the way that she conveys her wisdom. And I thought I can learn a lot from this lady. <laughs> I've invited her on today to share some of her amazing fae experiences and other encounters and some of her wisdom that she's retrieved from the other world. Welcome, Shifra. Thank you very much. Gonna mm. give me a big head. <laughs> <laughs> so where to start? Because I've been watching so many of your videos and you've sent me a wonderful bio. And um, I thought maybe we could start with your um, experience of knowing that you had a past life as a witch, and then there's another past life that you remembered as well. So could you just share with us um, this knowing that you've had and your past lives? Well, I think that... Uh my conscious memory of having been here before starts about four years old. Mm. It's, you know, as far as like, I think I always knew. Um, <clears throat> but around then was when I became very much aware of it. And the first thing I remembered was being burned at the stake. Mm. So yeah, not much fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <gosh>. <laughs> and uh, so I remembered that part. I didn't remember the rest of it at that point I just remembered the ending I guess mm -hmm. you could say but then the other life I remembered was so completely different from physical reality here yeah it's like a place where um I used to um dance with my aura I could see the colors of my aura and so forth and I used to do that as a kid all the time I was always like making motions with my hands and yeah. trying to recreate that uh sense of that feeling of energy moving and to try and see the colors and stuff again and mm -hmm. there were so many things that were different like stone was alive and you could feel it when you stepped on it it was like pretty clearly not physical reality i don't mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. um, i think it was like another dimension or or whatever yeah that, that experience was in like before we were all here <clears throat> as solid beings and so forth but i think that remembering that gave me some kind of uh, grounding and hope mm. and also something to compare things to and so when things happened to me i knew when they were wrong that there was mm. something wrong with the people i lived with and and something wrong with how they were treating everybody yeah. and and it was it was just this uh kind of thing and <clears throat> i a few years back i remembered before i was born just before mm. i was born gosh which was like an amazing thing because mm. i was a ball of light and i was floating and there was another ball of light and it was kind of floating around me and this voice said you will now forget everything you know until it comes time for you to remember wow and i woke up from that and like i remember <gasps> i was supposed to forget <laughs> like Gosh. how awesome is that yeah and you know so the things like that that have happened um they, they never know when they're going to happen. They just sort of spontaneously take place. And I remember like, I guess in school, they started talking about the Salem witch trials. And mm -hmm. I was raised in Rhode Island as at that point. I started school in the first grade in Rhode Island. So I went through first through eighth grade there. So I don't remember what grade they started teaching about 
the Salem witch trials, but I was like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah Same. and i was a witch and then i started like mm -hmm. looking at all this information and it was all wrong mm -hmm. like nothing felt right i did research i found some old grimoires and i think i probably read the malice maleficarum and and you know that was a horrible book written by the inquisitors and so forth and how to recognize a witch and all of that was wrong you just had this sense that this is just wrong um and so yeah and then the other major thing happened when i was in grade school in the fourth grade they started teaching us about greek mythology so i learned about gods and goddesses and my mind just exploded <laughs> i went my, my brain just went like really you mean people used to think different they used to have different sets of beliefs than they do now. Well, this means that they could have different sets of beliefs again. Mm. And it just kind of made my little brain <laughs> just go crazy. <laughs> and I immediately named my doll Aphrodite. She was my first goddess. And then my sister uh, was jealous because my doll was a goddess. So mm -hmm. I let her name her doll Venus. <laughs> Because in my opinion, Aphrodite was the original. <laughs> so we played our, you know, goddesses with our dolls and oh, things. And wow. I really wasn't aware of the fact that, you know, it's like, it was just who I was. Mm -hmm. And um, I was born in 1950 and there really wasn't much out there. Um, I think as a teenager was when Sybil Leak first did her interview on television and I discovered that there were other people that were witches that were out there, which was extremely exciting, but she was too far away mm -hmm. for me to do anything about. And, um, and then the, the spirits that I saw when I was a kid seemed to be there to comfort me and try and protect me. I had two guardian angels and they would like sleep on either side of me when I went to bed oh. at night. And, you know, they couldn't really do much about what was happening in my house, mm. but it seemed like they were just trying <laughs> what they could do to mm. make me feel better. And mm. it was around that age, too, that I first met Moida, who is like my, uh, the being I channeled for a number of years in the late 70s and early 80s. Mm. And um, so they were always around and then I spent a lot of as much time as I could out in the woods and walking around and laying on the ground and looking at the clouds. And there was this big old rock um, at one of the houses on base where we lived that was, I called it the Cleopatra rock because it was like a chaise lounge kind of thing. Oh, wow. And it was just a perfect shape to lay on and oh. lay your head back and look up at the sky and all warm by the sun so I I loved being outdoors because it was certainly safer than being in my house <laughs> to say the least mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I encountered a lot of different spirits and things like that they were just they were just there they were just a part of my reality and I think it was first grade when I realized that other people didn't see the same things that I did there was a very big moment in my brain where we were standing with all all of us were standing looking out the window this big window for some reason and i kept seeing all these sparkling moving balls of light and they were just moving all over the sky and the horizon and i had heard of ufos because they had been talking about them already and i thought maybe that's what they were because i didn't know what a ufo was and I said something to the other kids and I said, hey, um, look at all those <laughs> moving lights. And they all looked at me and they said, what are you talking about? There are no lights. Oh. And I went, okay. So then I tried to suppress it, mm. yeah, which was pretty much impossible for me. I, I, I have, <laughs> I can't suppress it, but I did. I tried, you know, and not tell people what was happening. 
And then when I entered, um, went into puberty, I started having premonitions like one after another, after another, and they all happened. Every one I had came to pass. <clears throat> and that was a very chaotic time. Mm -hmm. And I was very confused. Um, I didn't like it. I didn't have any control. I didn't understand why I was experiencing that stuff. And in my brain later, I decided because I told my mother everything that happened, mm -hmm. uh, she came to trust my intuition and my visions and my premonitions. And I saved her from my father a couple of times. And mm -hmm. then I helped convince her that we needed to leave before he murdered us. Because that Gosh. was pretty much about to happen. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, and I wasn't ready to leave. I thought, you know, I have things. I don't know what they are, but I don't want to leave yet. Hmm. And so, you know, <clears throat> I was partly, I was the oldest in the family. So I ended up having all that stuff to deal with in therapy later to, you know, try and work out. Because I always thought of my siblings as my children, because I was trying to protect and take care of them sure. and so forth. Yeah. Gosh. But one of the things that really got me was uh, in the, late 70s is when I uh, heard about Starhawk and got her book mm. and was able to use her book um, to start restructuring my own subconscious and start to deal with some of that trauma. And it gave me a sense of power and control over myself and my own life mm -hmm. is one of the things I like about the craft. Seriously. Yes, yes. So but that sense of being able to change your reality and yeah, your future, yeah. your pathway, what's who's around you, all of that. I can imagine that. Yeah, taking responsibility for your own self mm. and you know your mental health and your path and so forth. Uh, when I had that shamanic dismemberment kind of experience, I had where I kind of. I guess was psychotic for about a year. Mm. I was, I would think um, I was hallucinating constantly and how I managed to get out of that is anyone's <laughs> guess. <laughs> I really don't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> it is not a good place, mm. but it was one of those moments, a sort of a watershed moment where I had to decide um, what I was going to do and what I was going to accept. And I've actually had people contact me because they've gone through similar things. Yeah. Would you say it's like the dark night of the soul experience? Well, more than that, it's mm -hmm. actually, yeah. yeah, the dark night of the soul is more like an angst kind of a thing compared to this. This was, uh, I experienced all of my deaths between all of my lives. Wow. And, and I couldn't, and getting into my body didn't stop anything. So everything was happening, no matter, usually being in your body helps to kind of minimize some of that sort of stuff. It sort of gives you a buffer between mm -hmm. you and all the mental and astral stuff that might be out there, because if you saw it all the time, it's, it's crazy making. Mm -hmm. And so I had to deal with it. And the way it was, it was like, um, every time I died, someone would ask me a question and then they would say I lost a piece of myself because I answered the question wrong or something. And and then at the end of that set, uh, this horrific, ugly creature thing came up and said, I'm the things you gave away. I'm all the things you gave away. Now you have to remember me. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 I am not doing that. And Moida was there uh, mm -hmm. during that experience and she sort of talked me through it. She was like on the other side of all the stuff I was seeing. She says, this is a memory. You're just yeah. remembering this. This mm -hmm. has already happened. You've already survived it. Everything is fine. You've remembered it. You know, just let yourself remember it. I'm like, yeah, easy for you to say. <laughs> You're not on this end of it. <laughs> yeah. But seeing her helped, mm -hmm. you know. Because uh, she wasn't like any of the other stuff. So so it's more of a, a complete destruction of the ego. It was like I lost everything that I thought was me. Mm. Um, and I kept a grain of sand. 
and refused to give that up. And then from that, I had to rebuild my entire psyche. Gosh, how did you go about that? I mean, that's the question. I don't, I mean, seriously, it's not, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Obviously mm. it took a long time, um, but it changes the way your brain works when mm. something like that happens, when you no longer are prone to the normal stuff that society throws at people. It's like, you can't conceive or perceive things the way everybody else does. Mm. And it's, it's hard to describe. And so I don't have the responses. Um, I'm not influenced <laughs> very much by media, <laughs> for example. Yeah, sure. And, and that kind of thing. But, but it's like, it, it, it does, it's a fundamental shift in mm -hmm. all of reality. Mm -hmm. And it made me personally responsible for my own spiritual development, period. Mm -hmm. It's like anything from that moment forward that happened was all because of work I did and choices I made. And that's one of the things that I talk a lot about on my channel is taking personal yeah. responsibility for our actions and not hiding from our warts. You know, it's like, if we hide from them, then there's nothing we can do. We can't fix them if we don't know they're there or don't recognize the fact that something is needs to be done. Yeah. So I have a lot less projection that I do mm -hmm. onto other people. Um, at least I hope so. I try. Projection is normal. People project. Mm -hmm. They can't help themselves because that's part of empathy, really. Right. You yeah. Project sure. yourself into someone else's life, mm -hmm. but. Um, I do my best. I try to become aware of it. Um, and I'm always learning yeah. something. new. Yeah. And I'm wondering how, you know, there's this real contrast, isn't there? You're talking about these really beautiful experiences that you've had and this real sort of dark side mm -hmm. as well as dark and light. Yep. And I, I'm just wondering how your connection with the Fae, you've spoken about your spirit guide as well. How, that team of otherworldly beings have helped you through this process? Well, I think that nature in itself, um, when I was going through that, at the beginning of that experience, everything was covered with awful stuff. Like thought forms were everywhere. There were demons on everything. And I was actually just talking about this the other day. <clears throat> I remember sitting on a hill outside and I was looking at this tree and it was just covered with these creepy creature thingies that were just mm -hmm. like, you know, being mean and saying awful things or what have you. And I was looking at this tree and I'm like, no, this tree is a beautiful tree. This is, this is a life. This is, there's, there's beauty and wonder in this, in this thing. And I'm going to make these things go away mm -hmm. so I can see the leaves again because they were covering up everything. And so I like forced um, these images mm -hmm. away. How, I don't know, but I did until I could see the tree again. I mean, it was like making it impossible to eat because there was just like this horrible stuff on everything. And oh um, so getting back to nature was a key thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, the encounter that I had with the tree, because, you know, I went through oh, some yes. different breakups and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And when I was a kid, I used to think there was something seriously wrong with me that the universe must hate me. And because everything was just so awful. And I would like cry mm -hmm. myself to sleep every night. I call it soul sobs. You know, you just sort of feel everything is broken. Oh gosh. And I was feeling like that again. Um, my kids were little. I was leaving my second husband and I was sitting outside on the porch and I was just sobbing and I felt this very distinct amazing warmth and mm. love and care just sort of wrap itself around me and mm. it was so startling because it was <laughs> seriously not how I was feeling at no, all no knew it couldn't be coming from me and so I kind of stopped crying like what is going on here and then mm -hmm. I realized it was the tree in the backyard Gosh. that had out and that was 
probably one of the most healing things I think that that has ever happened to me that kind of broke open a whole bunch of stuff because it was in that moment that I realized that the universe, nature, life, all that stuff out there accepted me and loved me just exactly for who I was yes. and, and, and how I was and everything else without any kind of a judgment. Mm. What people thought didn't matter. Mm. Yeah, that's what, that's, yeah, I can understand that feeling of... Was, because yeah. I everything and, and that was around the same time I made a commitment to try and and accept reality on its own terms without in, trying to interpret it mm. uh, through what people thought, because I realized everything I knew people had decided they had written it down, they had defined it, they had said it, they had spread it. <clears throat> and the realization that we're not as smart as we would like to think we are. <laughs> yeah I've heard you say that and that's really struck me that's really you know to do with that kind of ego dismemberment thing that you were talking about that you know no matter what we read um, how much we learn it's all been done before it's all out there I mean that's that's kind of thing you're talking about isn't it that the oh yeah if we're the, if we're accepting yeah. what people's version of reality is but reality itself is so much bigger than that yeah Sure. And reality doesn't care what we think of it. It is. It just exists. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I've been able to have these kinds of experiences with different spirit beings and so forth, because, you know, I'm coming to them, not from a, I know what you are and I know what you do. And I've heard all these stories about you, sure. but I'm like meeting them on yeah. their own terms mm. without the judgment um, already pre-laid down. Oh, that's, that's, been, yeah. thing, that's mm. been one of the things I've been trying to like you know talk to people about mm. is if we consider the fact that reality is just you know we're a small part of reality and reality is there's so much more out there I mean compared yeah. to the entire universe what are we you know <laughs> we're like very minuscule and mm. and so it's been our problem for a long time <laughs> 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 The, you know the cat's meow or whatever it's like you know we are the epitome of all things that have ever happened and it kind of blinds us to to other forms of intelligence mm -hmm. I mean I've been able to meet for the first time I've met like a stone matrix the spirit of a stone that was a surprise uh, I, I, I have this, that. sorry yeah I have yeah. this piece of uh, blue kyanite it's just a raw piece of kyanite mm. And I just liked it and it wasn't very expensive and I don't have lots of money. So, you know, I don't have to have a fancy super stone. Sure. And I just like, this feels nice in the hand. I like that stone. So I'm going to take that home. And so one night um, I, I see a lot of stuff just as I'm getting ready to go to sleep and my sight opens up as soon as the sun starts to go down. Gosh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you it, control it or is it just, it just happens? Bit, yeah. I can control it to a certain extent, but yeah. And, yeah. and uh, decide what I'm going to pay attention to. But I'm laying down sleeping or starting to go to sleep. I start to see this form hmm. like next to my bed and it's not changing shape or anything. It's static. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's weird. You know, why isn't that changing shape? Because usually things just are moving around all over the place. And then I'm looking at it. And I, it has these planes, like solid planes, uh, edges and things. And then suddenly I realized that it's the shape of my crystal. And now I know which way is up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <This crystal. laughs> but I mean, the stuff that I see when I'm going to bed, I never know. Um, I met a, a native guide. Uh, I went to a um, power spot. A medicine mm. in southern Saskatchewan. Uh huh. Yeah. And I met this guy there at this power spot. And every so often he, he comes back. He just sort of mm. shows up. And I never know when or why. He just kind of is there. And one night I was, I saw this very large eye. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. What is that eye? And I'm like, trying to figure out what this eye is. And I sort of back up and it's a horse. He's on his horse oh. <laughs> next to my bed. Uh, okay. 
Hi. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> <It's my> worse. <laughs> but you know, it's just like the stuff is just there. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm a paranormal investigator and I help oh. go to cross over to the other side. I learned how to open up the portal between the worlds. And mm -hmm. so I've had a lot of experience with helping spirits who are stuck in one place to get to where they're supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and so, yeah, it's kind of interesting, all the various things. And uh, we were talking about this on the live show yesterday. And, and like, you know, people ask you what kind of a witch you are. Hmm. There's people love labels. They really yes. want to find things. And my yeah. answer to that is I'm whatever kind of witch I need to be for the moment I find myself in. <laughs> mm. That's a good answer. I mean, it, I mean, coming back to the labels as well for fairies, I mean, we are tend to be hung up on labels for fairies and what type of fairy they are. And, oh, if it's not in the fairy dictionary, then it's not, you can't be seeing a fairy. And I mean, that's it not my belief. But else, yeah, yeah that, that's the kind of thing I've, you come across, don't you, when you're dealing with that realm. So, and you were saying something before we came on about your your understanding of the fairy realm and who they are and it'd be great to hear about your um your viewpoint on that well i know that they're there they have their own thing that's the mm. thing a lot of people say they want to work with they want to work with the fairies and that's great except usually when they say that they want the fairies to do things for them mm. yeah. and and you know the 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 fae decide who they're going to work with um, and in what level I have helped them out in certain situations and, uh, they've helped me out in other certain situations. It's kind of like they have their own, their own culture, their own, their own, um, idea of what needs to happen and what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's more like, um, it's a relationship. Yes. Yeah. And. And, and it's up to them. I, I, in this relationship, I feel it's up to the fate to decide how much contact, what kind of contact and so forth that they want. The fact that I can see them for, for what they are is something they find fascinating. And I had one night, Why? I had about a dozen gnomes come into my oh room. My gosh, I'd love to hear about that. <laughs> and and, and yeah. I kept seeing all these different faces. It's like mm -hmm. one face would come and and we're talking, these are like the most detailed line drawings you've ever seen in your life. We're, we're, it, they're, it's all black and white. It's not like in color for me, uh, yeah. but there's these intensely specific and they all had different noses and facial mm -hmm. hair and eyes and so forth. And what they wanted to know was, could I see that they were all different? And I said, oh. yes. Yeah. I can see that each one of you is different. You know, yes. they don't look the same. They're individuals. Yeah. And so okay. that was just like, they just thought that was the coolest thing. And uh, the most recent encounter I had was with the forest troll. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. I, I yeah. We, were, we went to this power spot. There's a power spot in, in Oregon. Mm. That's a place that you can rent. I found accidentally. And mm. it opened a lot of my clairvoyant abilities I started seeing all kinds of things like giant things in the sky and okay and, and just mm. and the, the, there's a, a I don't know a fairy colony <laughs> or whatever there that both my husband and I saw in years past oh, where gosh. They have their houses and stuff it's on another plane but they're mm. and, and it's very distinctive looking I think the most beautiful uh female fae I've ever seen oh uh, <laughs> Yes. Was this, I mean, it's like hard to describe, but but when she came into view, it's like there's just this absolute glowing beauty that mm. is possible to really share. But it was there, so it was wonderful. So we were very excited that we got to go back. And and, and that was sorry to, to jump in, but I was watching that video actually earlier today where you talk about that experience and you were talking about how you I mean the way that I understand it it's 
scrying, a way of scrying where you were looking at um, the bushes and seeing the fairies appearing. Is that the mm -hmm. experience you're talking about? Yeah, because I mean, that's I can relate to that. That's the way that I see the fae in nature appearing from appearing yeah, they from nature. Start off like paradelia, where you sort of, you know, where people tend to see human figures in anything that they have because the brain wants to have something, excuse me, identifiable. Yeah. But um, but then they become distinct. Mm. And with the um, with the forest troll, I got into a different section. My husband and I had, and this was funny because he sat in one area to meditate, and apparently the fairies didn't like where he was sitting, mm. and he got the message <laughs> that he needed to move. <laughs> so he was very excited about that. <laughs> you know, moved. Yeah. I said, they didn't like where I was. <laughs> so I had to go somewhere else. I'm like, awesome. He says, yes, that's very exciting that I could tell that they didn't like where I was. And I was sitting, you know, farther down the path. And, mm. and there was this, this tree that just seemed to have a presence about it. And, and so I was like looking at it. I'm like, okay. So I just softened my eyes and let my clairvoyant vision start to open up and wait. And then all of a sudden, the most amazing 10 foot tall troll oh. appeared as solid oh. as could be with very intense eyes. Mm. And he was right at me. And then he knew I could see him mm. and that happened. So then he started trying to change his shape. Oh. He started shifting because they do that a lot because they, they're worried about how we're gonna react. I think uh -huh. what they look like because we have a lot of judgments about what things look like and what that means mm -hmm. and, you know he's just started to get different sizes and so forth and I said no that's fine you can you can just be who you are and that's okay with me and then he reverted back to what I'd seen previously and we just sort of sat there and looked at each other no words were exchanged there wasn't a message but it was just this yeah I can yeah. see you and it's okay and I think that's you know a lot of that kind of programming that we have is something's got like warts or a big nose or mm. is tall and intimidating and and it brings up all these childhood fears and anxieties and the stories about the faith there's a lot of those mm. you know and a lot of them have been spread by the church because they were trying to keep people from um having interactions with the fae and mm. so they became part of satan's denizens like yeah. sort of and spirits of some kind and yeah. and so whenever i read a story about a fairy and it starts off with on my way back from church i'm like okay well that's <laughs> not that's not a story i need to to read because there's a an implicit bias <laughs> Moral <one>. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and then the fairies are going like can i be saved you know it's like can i have a soul i'm like no <laughs> that's not that's not <laughs> they feel. They've been here longer than we have. Yes. Yeah. And and not only have I met them, but I've also I've also encountered a couple of uh, inhuman spirits that aren't fairy <clears throat> at all. Um, and and yeah, I'm glad that I can be on my toes and be in the moment and pay attention because this mm. one being who was sort of like a cross between a tiger and a lion reminded me of a fool lion kind of thing oh sorry for what's a fool lion. the fool lion is like a, a chinese spirit oh a, okay a lion dog kind of mm. protects temples and so forth and he got stuck in this house he couldn't find his way out oh. and um when i encountered him it was a huge amount of energy and my tendency is to like get closer <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. it's like closer so I can like feel more and figure out what it is. And I started to get closer and there was like growling and mm. teeth. So I'm like, oh, back up, <laughs> back up and sit down. Let's not get closer. <laughs> and then started to try to communicate with this being um, and got images of people throwing books at it and water at it and you know, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, someone tried to exercise this thing. 
Oh, <laughs> gosh. And it had so much energy. Mm -hmm. I could like clawing furniture or, you know, in frustration. And it was very suspicious of me and all the people that were in the house because it didn't know what we were up to. And I have a selenite wand I use because uh, selenite, I love selenite. That stuff is just wonderful. It's kind of like solidified light force. Yeah. It's like energy mm -hmm. that's made into a material form that you can hold on to. And so I used my piece mm -hmm. of sunlight because spirits can see that energy. And I, I put it, you know, like projected it down into the other side, I guess, mm -hmm. or what, mm -hmm. and said, follow this light. I can lead you out of this place so you can get unstuck. And I started backing up slowly and it followed me out of the house. And that thing had so much substance that everyone else who was there saw the shadow on the rug as it Gosh. passed over the uh, rug. And, and then we got it outside and then it was very happy. We <laughs> 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 wanted to come back in. We're like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's stuck again. And, and it is, I, I've tried to see if I could find out any stories about it, like from the local native legends and so forth, but there's so little information about mm -hmm. some of the spirit beings. And uh, so we gave it a place outside and okay. gave it like some crystals or whatever. And you could actually see where it slept. Mm. It actually slept with the grass. Mm. <laughs> oh, woman, wow. That's amazing. So it's like you've got, got a pet food line. Every so often she could see it walking by. It was like guarding her house. And she was a fellow yeah. witch. And yeah. there was this guy, these two guys, there was a bar nearby and these two guys came by in the middle of the night and she heard them and the one guy was going to like go to the bathroom outside of her fence right okay talking about doing that and yeah. then all this dead silence and then he's like i think i'm gonna go home <laughs> and do that at home <laughs> so she's pretty <laughs> sure that he felt the um presence of yeah. the spirit being going like <laughs> yeah just try it <laughs> so you know it's like just like there's like uh different species of animals and so forth mm -hmm. it's like you know there's things that live in south america that i will never see mm -hmm. and things that live in africa and australia and so forth that i will never see but it doesn't mean that they're not there no sure mm. so, trying to keep an open mind and, mm. and sort of experience things as they go. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk with you a little bit more about the crystals because I'm, I've am i got another episode coming up in a couple of weeks time where I, I spent some time with a woman um, in another part of the UK who has lots of fairies in her garden, gnomes, all, all sorts. Um, she calls them nature spirits. Um and she has a shack in her garden, like a creative building where she does all of her, she has loads of crystals. She sells crystals. And and I was saying to her, well, I think these fairies are, are very definitely attracted to your crystals. And that's why they're crowding around every night because she's caught... Um, like orbs on her cameras going into her into this cabin where her crystals oh. are <laughs> it's, uh, there's even she's even captured like little images of where they appear to be carrying crystals cool yeah sort of crystal light um, so and I've heard you talking about crystals and creating crystal a crystal engine and yeah that was pretty interesting yeah. with all the orbs that happened in in that right. the energy yeah. that you captured was quite a surprise to me mm. I didn't see that I could feel mm. it but I didn't think I'd see it on film yeah because you captured like a, a misty <laughs> light didn't you that you and it was in all of the pictures that kept moving mm. yeah as, as I you know through the wands and stuff that I made. It's one of the mm. reasons why I'm working with wood and with wands, because it's kind of a, it's a nature tool in that sense. Mm. 
Mm. And you can tune the wood to carry whatever energy it is that you might need. And I, I went nuts with wands. I've got one for every planet now. Oh, great. Yeah. I have all seven of the planets, including the moon, of course, which is mm. technically not a planet, but <laughs> in the old days it was. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, finding out how versatile a tool that is. And the crystals that I use on them is definitely part of um, part of that. This mm. right here, I bought myself a fairy star recently. Oh, wow. I put this amethyst on it. And this matching amethyst that I had mm -hmm. is underneath the yew tree on that power spot. So it's a direct oh, connection yeah. to the energy of that place. <clears throat> oh that's that's an interesting thing to do because I've done that with um two malachite crystals but mm -hmm. I was instructed to take one to this woodland and keep one at home so it's uh, so They're I was just through yeah. the ether or whatever yeah <clears throat> yeah so a uh, lot of the things that I've listened to you and watched that you've been talking about, I've had aha moments. So I've thought, well, I didn't know why I was doing that, but here's Shifra talking about, well, this does this, and this is why, you know, how this works. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it's amazing, isn't it? This yeah, if we can understand the, the reason why some of the stuff, you know, that's passed down, like even the basic mm. stuff, like why do you cast a circle three times? Mm -hmm. and nobody knew and I'm like well because you're casting it on the physical plane and then you're casting it on the astral plane and then you're casting it on the mental plane because you know yeah. you're dealing with energies and all these different levels of energies and so forth and it's mm -hmm. not just an idea of a circle there's actually things <laughs> there's reasons for this but yeah and I think that you know, it's sort of like a, an exciting time of exploration and interaction with some of these, you know, like with the tree spirits and mm. and the nature spirits and so forth and power spots and kind of yeah. get back in, getting back into that. And there's always been a um, sort of camaraderie between witches and the Fae, historically speaking. Mm. They're, we're not the only ones they're interested in, obviously, but because of the fact that we're more aware of and in tune with energies that are outside of everyday reality and we are tending to pay more attention then they can mm -hmm. interact with us more mm -hmm. i think <clears throat> i just yeah. think it's cool to get to see them <laughs> even if nothing ever happens it's just like wow look at you it's yeah like, and you shared, um, I'm really interested in your she experience that you had. And uh, I'm sure people will be interested in hearing about that. One with the long white hair. Yes. I haven't seen him in a while. And there's a her that has come as oh, well. Okay. Um, and then mm. another her that has darker hair. But I haven't seen them in the last while, probably because they're busy. It's that mm. time of year. Uh, yeah. But when I saw him... Uh, he was he one of our members of our group actually encountered him first hmm. and at another house where she was she was at her father's place and he was like looking through the window floating up above the house and she saw him and she called me on the phone in a panic wow. she said um uh, <laughs> and there's this <laughs> long white haired dude you know floating like what do I do? I said, well, is he threatening? No. Um, is he trying to come in without permission? No. Well, go outside and see what he wants. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. How are you going to go? So she went outside and, and he came up to her and said that, that they'd seen what she was doing, that she was doing the right thing. And he gave her like an astral necklace that he put on her collarbone. Oh, wow. But, and so yeah. she was like kind of blown away by that. That was mm. pretty cool. So when I first saw him at my house, he was actually riding a stag. I It was like, uh, I think I, we went through a weird time when we were under a psychic attack, magical mm. attack by some crazy people that are, I mean, you know, egos, et cetera. 
and he was there guarding my property and mm -hmm. um, and then he came in a couple of times and just kind of hung out like I haven't been I haven't gotten a conversation message it's just they just keep showing themselves <laughs> to me <laughs> here yeah can you see this like mm -hmm. I can see that you were talking about how he was arranging chairs I'm putting chairs out oh like an invitation like an invitation and you you waited for the I think it's the approach to the full moon you waited for the full moon and you lit three candles and invite to to invite him in to talk talk with him um Apparently, I have so many experiences, I don't remember them all. <laughs> it's okay. I might have watched that video, so I know what I did. Yeah, it was three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. Like on Facebook, every so often, I get a memory. It's like yeah. I, I I met a selkie, or no, oh. a, a water horse. Yeah. Mm. I forgot well, a selkie. I forgot that I met a Kelpie until the memory came back up on my Facebook page. I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot all about that. <laughs> so I on that one apparently because it's not in my brain at the moment. <laughs> but that's the thing, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. things keep happening. It's not, it's not a static relationship. And uh mm. Now I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> you described a lovely experience as well that I thought I have to talk with you about where you, when you were a child and you found the soft sand. Um, oh, I goodness. was really moved soft by sand. that. I yeah. loved that sand. That was the most wonderful mm. thing. And I would, it was like in the middle of the forest and on a path, there was no real sand anywhere else. It was just this section and I would go there and play with it. And what was really funny was when I did my astral temple exercise mm -hmm. and I was checking out my astral temple, that sand is in my astral temple. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. That's, and and yeah. I thought, oh, look, <laughs> there's that sand. And I realized I could draw sigils or, or symbols. Yeah. Or whatever in it and and put it directly into my temple that way i don't think i've done anything with it in particular that i know of but i just thought that was a really cool idea yeah so when you i mean when you encountered it as a child i mean well yeah it was you... amazing warm soft mm -hmm. the softest mm -hmm. stuff and i would it was so wonderful to touch it was so tactile and soothing and and stuff and I would often go there and just sit there for hours and just touch the sand oh. it made me feel comforted somehow so do you think do you think that was a power spot that you'd found it's possible think, yeah yeah because you know certainly I have found them here and there and um and I had that one experience with that giant ley line that needed to be fixed down in Big Sur where the fairies oh. were there to assist but they couldn't do it I, I, fairies mm. and and guardian angels have got some similar restrictions or something and it's like right. like mm. you know i've done some distant healing where i've encountered someone's guardian angel and uh, said is it okay for me to do a healing on this person and they're going like we cannot interfere <laughs> human thing <laughs> must decide this for yourself I'm like yeah well you're you're not very helpful. Thanks. Okay. I guess I'll have to think this one through. <clears throat> but, um, but yes, yeah, similarly, um, when I encountered the, the uh, ley line that had been twisted and perverted and mm. shifted over to turn into dark magic and stuff like that, and I was trying to heal it, I could, the fairies were everywhere and I'm like can you guys do this I've got rid of this problem again humans did it humans have to fix it I'm like yeah but why oh. the human <laughs> yeah <laughs> I said well can you help and they said mm -hmm. yeah just we can help 
And so they were like a bridge from one side of the ley line to the other in the, in the astral realm. And as we walked up and healed it, they were able mm -hmm. to like, you know, keep the energy going in that direction until it took off. And when it took off, it was pretty oh. obvious. And I find it fascinating. Oh, yeah with the power spots and ley lines and energy and stuff like that. I encounter that sometimes in hauntings or supposed hauntings. And it's actually earth energy that's gotten stuck in the wrong place and it's interfering with the living. Mm -hmm. And I had to make them go underneath the house mm -hmm. and like, you know, put a certain, I think I use like uh, petrified wood or, or obsidian or tourmaline or whatever to, make the energy go down under the ground and then use a piece of jade to make the energy come back up. So it makes like a little oh. island. Oh, well, that's interesting. We have a, a yeah. house across the street that one of our mm. members is in. And, uh, and she was having a terrible time in her house and wanted me to go over and check it. I'm like, it's like, I mm. can't, it's a ghost. No, but the energy was awful. And so I thought, okay, I know what's going on. So, and the street has got this slope. So the houses are like this, but the street goes down like that, right? Uh, yeah. So I lowered the energy down there and then I went to the end of the street mm. and I think of standing in front of it. <laughs> when I put the stone and it knocked me over. <gasps> when the oh. energy came through, it actually knocked me on my butt. Oh. And I was like, okay, note to self, stand on the outside. <laughs> fall down that's not a good idea so yeah it's like you learn yeah. stuff little things like that that are mm -hmm. just there in your head and and uh i just love the fact that the universe has got a lot more to it than just us people yeah it's it's fascinating isn't it and um that's why i love speaking with people like like yourself because it just puts that message out there that there is more to this world and this universe than we all, you know, think, you know, than right. just is on Facebook and, you know, media and whatever. I mean, I don't watch TV anyway, but it's, um, yeah, it's like open your mind and accept that there is more to the world. Yeah. And one of the things, you know, one of my focuses is helping people to find their own power. Mm. I don't like to do things for people. Yeah, sure. Mm. You know, I want them to learn how to do it for themselves. Mm. If, if you empower someone to be able to take care of their own situation, then they're not dependent on you. And then that gives them that confidence in themselves to be able to deal with whatever comes next. Mm. And, um, yeah, that's why I'm try I really work hard not to be a cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> I'm against that. <laughs> completely. Well, um, I'm inspired by your inspiration to do this because um, similar to many, many people around the world, during lockdown, you were inspired to do this channel, weren't your channel, weren't you? I actually started before yeah. COVID. I started in March right. before COVID. It was just oh, something okay. just popped yeah. into my head. And I'm like, because mm. I'm seeing all this stupid stuff about the Fae <laughs> on all these. And I'm trying to like correct people. It's like, no, that's not the way it is. And they're all yeah. shouting down and no one will listen. I thought, okay, fine. I'm just going to talk about it and put it out there. If nobody is interested, that's fine too. Because I'm just going to do this and see if I can share what I've learned because we're not doing groups anymore. I don't have an apprentice or whatever. Mm. Um, and I've accumulated a huge amount of experience and knowledge, apparently enough that I forget some of this. <laughs> 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 and, you know, mm. share it with other people so that it's not completely lost. And this is a wonderful mm. format with, within which to do it because I'm a storyteller and telling mm. a story is, is like my go-to way to talk about whatever it is, my experiences and so forth. And then the people can decide if they want to do anything with it 
and it's okay if people don't agree with me because they're my experiences and sure. everyone yeah. is experiencing reality in a slightly different way. Although I really mm. try to avoid like, you know, conspiracy theories. I'm a sci- I love science. Mm-hmm. And some people find this sort of a weird combination mm. that I'm a witch and I believe in science, mm. but I don't see them as separate. I see them as parts of the same reality and and um and i i don't want to like become so far out in the ether that i can't get grounded anymore science helps to ground me i guess sure yeah i understand yeah i was interested in the oh yes that was it the hydrangea fairy oh yes i thought you were going to mention that that was a beautiful Yes, and apparently they have, since I encountered her, someone, uh, one of the members of our channel who actually lives in the state went there and they have removed the hydrangea. No. It's gone. But yeah, we were up at, um, outside of Blue River on Highway 126, uh, which is a place now that has had a lot of fires and so forth. So who knows what it looks like at this point. Hmm. But we were up there at the hot springs and when they have like a little bridge that goes across the river and um, on the other side there's these gardens they do weddings and all sorts of stuff and whatnot and we were just walking around and I saw this human-sized uh, blue fairy standing mm-hmm. next to the hydrangea she was just like there and she was interested in the want my staff I had my staff with me right oh. and she noticed my staff and um, she wanted to get a closer look. And so, yes, okay, <laughs> I brought it over and uh, you know, briefly conversed with her. And she told me to take some of the flowers from the hydrangea and take them with me. So I picked one of the flowers and I have a, a little jar that's got those hydrangea flowers in them. Oh, and I have wow. some other flowers that I've collected. I started growing some roses and uh, collected some rose blossoms and and i have my fairy wand which i was going to bring out but i forgot it's in the house <clears throat> but uh, i was thinking that i could connect with specific fae by putting i have like these tiny little jars you know that you can get their little craft jars that i know yeah little vials mm-hmm. kind of thing and and put the um flower dried flower in it and then hang it from the wand I haven't done it yet but that's an idea that popped into my head that that would be a cool thing Mm. that connects the specific um, energy of that particular plant and Mm. so yeah I'm always learning (laughs) well yeah I mean I've got roses right outside my window and I yeah feel connection to them. My rose bush I grew because it's um, it was to commemorate my last cat. Ah. So her ashes are underneath this rose bush. So every year when it blooms, I'm reminded of her. But yeah, I mean roses they've got such an amazing fairy energy about them, haven't they? And um, that's a energy too, sacred to Ishtar, Nana, Aphrodite. And when my mm. husband and I got married, we got married on May 23rd, which that year was the Festival of the Rose, which was dedicated to Ishtar, Nana, and Aphrodite. And roses have always been important to me as well. Yeah. So if you mm. saw the episode where I talked about the things that can happen that are sort of out of the blue with me and roses. No, I haven't seen that. So, I lived yeah. in Santa Cruz at the time, and I... Mm. And when I was becoming a massage therapist and I needed to get a job that was flexible and, and that had full benefits for my, ch- for my, me, my, me and my children. And, uh, cause I had to drive to school three days a week. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I saw an ad in the paper, which was for working for the bus company in the administration department. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to go to this, the first interview, or which was the test where they test your skills and so forth. And I'm sitting on the bus, this is my transportation, and a stranger walks up to me and he hands me a rose and he says, here, this is for you. And I went like, mm. wow, I'm like on my way to try and get a job. A stranger's giving me a rose. I'm going to get this job. 
This is going to be my job. I know this is going to be my job. So I'm there and I'm not worried about what I'm doing. I'm not feeling nervous or anything. I ace the test. They call me back. And now I'm going in for a, a panel interview, I, which I've never yeah. done before. So like mm. three people are going to question me. And I'm working part time. I'm working for like, a, you know, one of those services uh, where, you know, they hire you for a few days and whatever temporary service. Mm. Oh, I know. Yeah. Some people, working yeah. at a local community college. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to leave to get the bus to go to this interview. And another man walks up to me and hands me a rose and says, here, this is for Gosh. you. And I'm like, okay. Once was cool. Mm -hmm. Twice is like, what? Okay. Yeah. This is definitely going to be my job. So I go to the interview and uh, when I'm done, I hand this rose off to one of the three women. And then I get called for the third interview, which is at the department. And at this point, I have to have a rose. It's become a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like good luck charm or whatever. Yeah. So I, I cannot make the universe give me another rose. This seems like asking for too much. So I pick a rose from my own garden mm -hmm. and I take it with me. And um, the woman that I had given the rose to was the, one of the women at that department who was interviewing me. And she says, what is with you and these roses? So I tell her about the other roses. And I got the job. And the whole time I worked there, I kept a rose on my desk as oh, wow. thank you to Aphrodite or whoever yeah. had sent me the job that I needed at the time that I needed it so that I could become a massage therapist and change my career and everything else. Hmm. Yeah. So I have a strong connection <laughs> to roses. Yeah. I. I mean, this is about you. I, I can relate to that because I had a similar experience. It was my, actually, it was 2019 for my birthday. Three, three different friends gave me a little mini rose bush, a, a pink one, a white one, and a red one. And around that time, I'd had a dream because I picked up a stone from a woodland near where I live ask permission to bring it home and I had a, a dream about a fairy that took me to some rose bushes in <clears throat> in Golden Gate Park and um, there's a man on the bench and anyway I I googled it I googled fairy because I saw a fairy door in the dream fairy door Golden Gate Park and this man's name came up that had written a book about fairy doors and had put a fairy door with his son in Golden Gate Park. So it was all these... Oh, lots of synchronicities. Synchronicities with cool. roses and, yeah. Yes. And yeah, there are rose bushes in Golden Gate Park. There's benches with rose bushes. And it's like, wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Yes, cool. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, is like, you know, the really important things that happen to us are often the little things. Yeah. Mm. And, and and I think that's what a lot of people are missing. They're missing that connection. They have a hard time connecting with the world uh, because they're so distracted by everything that's going on with people and so forth. And if we can get back to that connection with our environment and with the world that we live in and realize how important it is for us all, without mm. it, not going to be here for much longer the way we're, we're <laughs> treating it and so forth yeah and, and that then that becomes uh it enriches our existence and enriches our spirits and so forth and helps to get us out of that self-defined ego importance thing mm. and then yeah. we much more open to receiving these amazing coincidences and synchronicities and so forth because we're paying attention mm. listening to our own intuition um mm. yeah because i think universe is always communicating and people often ask me like do i do scrying and all this other stuff and to look into the future and i say well no not really anymore because i'm in a constant communication with the universe and if there's mm. something i need to know the universe tells me on a, mm. some level, lets me know. I see the signs. I pay attention, so I don't yeah. have like an effort 
And if something bad is coming, then I know it. I knew about COVID. Hmm. Uh, I had a very strange dream just before the, the epidemic started. And in it, I was in a park with my family. It was sort of like a building, one of those buildings that has a back but no sides. And there was an airplane that was got hit by a missile and the airplane was crashing and there was this cloud of stuff coming towards us. And I saw it was coming and I knew that it was gonna be close and that it was going to affect a huge area. Hmm. And I thought I was far enough away, I'd probably be fine, but I put everybody behind the wall just in case. And I woke up from that dream and I knew we were in for something huge, some mm. world that was going to take place that was going to affect a lot of people. And so yeah. it, it was a surprise. It seemed pretty clear. <laughs> it was going through the air. <laughs> yeah. Was, and yeah. is that, do you think that was the impetus, Shifra, between you start behind you starting your channel and thinking? Maybe so. Of it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember when I had that dream but it was one of those dreams that you know you wake up from it and you go like okay that meant something Mm. and um yeah when you're an empath and really connected to things when I lived up in the up north in the middle of nowhere I knew a lot about world events that were going on on the planet because the trees would tell me oh that's great yeah yeah Yeah. and 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 Mm. that was good I was glad that I was there because I think that helped a lot just being mm. completely in nature and not having anything between me and the world kind of thing. It's like, you don't chop your wood, you're going to freeze to death. If you don't haul your water, you're not going to have anything to drink. It's just basic survival. And you're living with more animals than people. We had more bears than people. Mm. Would you consider that part of a sort of initiatory time for you? I think so, because yeah. uh, that was when I was doing a lot of channeling. And that was when things started to shift for me. I left David, who was the guy who got me into doing the channeling in the first place and Mm. started and went into therapy. Uh, My first uh, counseling sessions happened when I was up there and started trying to deal with the childhood trauma and Mm. abuse and so forth. So I think everything connects together that it's not just the, and that's when I also found Starhawk and was doing the unconscious work working with my conscious and my subconscious and restructuring it and seeing how that changed, getting rid of fears and anxieties and things that had been like laid in there from before I could say anything, whether I liked it or not. And Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they all kind of work together, like the different levels, physical, emotional, and mental. It's like, they're all important. So yeah, I'm making a connection. Um, that was after the tree had yeah. mm-hmm. shared that with me. And so being out there, it was like whenever I was doubtful about what was going on, I could just go outside. And my first wand was from one of the first trees that I made a connection with when I moved up there. I used to oh. meditate underneath this cedar tree every day for about a year. Mm. And they kicked me out of that place and were going to kill the forest. Oh, um, gosh. And I was very upset Mm. because, you know, I'd become friends with this tree. And the nice thing about trees is you know where they are. Sad thing Mm. about trees is sometimes they leave or you leave. And Mm. so that was, I went, I asked the tree for permission to uh, take a piece with it um, and preserve its spirit. And that has informed all of my wand work since. Mm. I have living wand wood. I don't. Mm you know use stuff I find off the ground I make a connection with the spirit of the tree and ask permission for it and Mm. uh, so they're they're like they're alive and Mm. that was that was that I made a date to go out there and get it and was pouring buckets and I went anyway because you have to make if you make a promise a magical promise you Mm. gotta keep it because it's a test oh yeah (laughs) And if you don't pass that test, well, that's the end of that. It was like, okay, yep, that's, I'm not ready for that. And I went and uh, and picked, got the piece of wood and took it back to the house and peeled it and sang to it and oiled it and 
It became my only one for many, many years mm. until I encountered the Madrone who said, hey, I would make a really nice solar wand. And I'm like, mm. what? <laughs> <laughs> That's my the question. Uh, what kind of wood would you use for a solar wand? He said, oh, you know, laurel, obviously. And I said, do we have any laurel in Oregon? He said, well, yeah, Madrone is a laurel. I went, you mean like that tree right there? <laughs> And talk to me, telling me to make a good solar wand. Uh huh. Like, oh. okay. And we had nothing to cut with. Yeah. And then the only time this has happened, went up to the tree. My husband poured some water at the base as an offering. Hmm. I put my hand on the branch. It said I could have. He touched the branch, and the branch fell off. Oh gosh. It wasn't cut. It just fell just. off was given to you yeah it tree. Was. yeah That's very special <laughs> wow and i was like oh wow that is so cool because we had no way and the drones are very hard wood mm. definitely not something that's easy to cut i don't know if we have that in the uk madrone i've heard of laurel right uh, different types of laurel yeah and you have you I'm making a bunch of you wands right now. Oh, yeah, I have you. Yeah. Yes. And you mm -hmm. is a lovely wood. I think the fairies really are connected to you. Yes. That, that is, that mm -hmm. seems to be quite clear. And we found a yew tree at the power spot in Southern Oregon. I've mm -hmm. never seen one before. And there it was. Yeah. Wow. So that was special. Yeah, they, they grow a lot around here. They're grown in churchyards in this country That's the reasons why you still have any they almost went extinct because their wood is so good for making bows and arrows yes and they mm. were almost, you know extinct because everybody kept cutting them and it was only because they had that story about the underworld and graveyards and the dead mm. and, and then became on sacred ground and then later church grounds and so forth that and then they were became protected. But the mm. earth used to have 80% of all trees used to be you. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't either. Yeah. It was in my book. <laughs> like, it's an awesome tree. Oh, so, but... yeah. It's like an original, original tree. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the one that helped build the atmosphere. Oh, that's so and cool. When, when no other trees would grow you you did so mm. yeah so i think you is very special and i like i like you yeah and very old as well they can live to the thousands of years yes amazing yeah yeah very wise imagine all the all the things that it's seen and absorbed in that time my god <laughs> yeah the trees definitely like the you would so yeah i but, wanted yeah sorry sorry that's um before we before we end i i wanted to um ask you about your astral traveling because i i loved what you shared about being in a car and mm -hmm. astral traveling from the car and under the road the hold yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i thought that was a brilliant share yeah, well, yeah. i was Word. there wasn't much to do and I just sort of popped out and was like still bored and I just thought huh I've never been under a road before I wonder if there's anything there popped in and found a secret military base <laughs> which was a big surprise and then I'm like oh well I'm invisible they won't know I'm here so I'll look around mm -hmm. I started looking around and apparently had a psychic on staff <sighs> And they knew I was there. <laughs> and I suddenly thought, uh-oh. <laughs> I need to get the hell out of here now. And so I mm -hmm. came back to the car and I told everybody, like, you know, don't drive funny, but um, we're driving over <laughs> a secret military base. And they know <laughs> I saw them. Um, and, and, you know, we're in the Appalachian Mountains. I think it was mm -hmm. intense. And all of a sudden, all these military jeeps started showing up on the mountains on these roads you didn't even know were there. and i'm like okay that's confirmation i'm not crazy 
I really did see a military base. Yeah. Did they follow you? Uh, they... No, they couldn't figure out which car I was in. Ah, oh, right. So, but they, yeah. But they were definitely there, and it was mm. pretty like that at first, and then they showed up, and yeah. I mean, because, of course, because they're the ones that use all of these techniques. Well, they certainly, I mean, one of the reasons mm. I left the States and went to Canada was to avoid being recruited. Right. Mm. I had some incidents yeah. that took place that made it pretty clear if I didn't get the heck out of here at that time that I'd end up in a place I didn't want to be. And mm. so I left. And nobody in Canada believed me. <laughs> And then it came out. <laughs> part of it, anyway. I said, well, that's not all of it. But yes, that was part of it yeah. that yeah. I saw at the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you know, which is why I try to avoid that, because it sounds like a conspiracy theory, except for the fact that that one seemed to be real. Yeah. Yeah, well, they've, they've CIA have released the, I think it's the Gateway Program, isn't it? It's called, that yeah. they were using. So it's yep. all kind of coming to light. Now. Yeah. Right. There's still mm. more that they haven't talked about. And they maybe never will, but then I met other people that they tried to recruit too. So it wasn't mm. just me at that point. So then you get some external confirmation. Mm. I like, nothing is proven until you know for sure kind of thing. So keep yeah. an open mind because mm. narrative is something that we like to do a lot. Mm. We like to create a narrative that makes sense to us. And a lot of times our narratives are wrong. <laughs> yeah. But they make us feel better. <laughs> uh, Shifa, it's been brilliant talking to you. And please share where people can connect with you and find you on the internet. Well, my YouTube channel is Shifa's Magic Alcove. Mm. And then I have uh, Shifa Bradigan. I have a Facebook profile that's yep. Shifa Bradigan. And I and the people in the group um, on the channel asked me to start a private group on Facebook. So I've mm -hmm. got Schaefer's Magic Alcove as a private group where people can just talk. I mean, my idea is that people can share their own stories, ask questions, get different points of view and so forth. It's not just mm -hmm. all about me. I don't want it to be all about me. So it's not like a lot of other Facebook groups where, mm -hmm. you know, you're not allowed to do a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, and then my email is uh, chiefersmagicalcove at gmail.com. I thought I should try and keep it consistent yeah, across yeah. platforms as possible. Yeah, it's a like easier. As an FYI, Chief of Bradigan translates to spirited elf. Does it? Mm-hmm. Oh. <clears throat> and weirdly oh. enough... There's a Sheaf of Bradigan on the internet from history in Ireland that was reputed to be a witch and could make the dead walk. <laughs> oh, wow. That was just fabulous when I found Yeah, yeah it's great, of course, because we, we, we didn't mention that, but you have this Irish hered uh, ancestry. Right, yeah. My, mm. uh, my grandmother was raised by her grandmother, at the base of Naknashi in mm -hmm. Sligo County. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the seven sacred hills of Ireland. And it's the yeah. hill of fairy. <laughs> mm. so and they, yet, yeah. Seems pretty clear we probably have fairy blood in our family because we are one weird family. That's <laughs> it runs my daughter, my granddaughter. It's like, you know, our abilities are definitely some it's being like it's hereditary. It would mm. appear. Although it could just be my influence and raising them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of fun. Yeah. I always told her that we were part fairy. And uh, and she said, well, um, I haven't seen any evidence of that. I said, it's not going to say in the family Bible was a fairy, mom. <laughs> You're going to find it where we lived. And people yeah. in Ireland do not like to live on fairy hills. Mm. only fairy friends would yeah. you say according to the local folklore so yeah it is wow. kind of cool oh what a cool mum to have and cool grandmother <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
it was it, it it's been it's been interesting my mother got to go to ireland twice i've not ever been able to go and that would be a mm -hmm. dream to be able to go and and just visit like you know where the family came from but yeah. people the family when my mother and my and her brother went they knew exactly who they were we have a tall gene in our family tree so right. and and it's like you know we have men that crop up they're like six foot two six foot three oh, all right. three. and <laughs> apparently a very telling gene in sligo county because this one woman came up to my uncle in church and looked mm. at him and says you must be a golden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So well, cool. I am. She says, we could be related. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they were extremely friendly people. My mother just had a blast. Yeah. I mean, the Irish arm, oh, just, yeah, I'd love to go. But I've been to Dublin, but I want to go to the west side. and well, The west side is where off. the ruins are. Right. Is on the the west coast and there's a story that atlantis was off the west coast of ireland ah. and i never heard that my mother told me and then i looked it up and someone had just written a book about that oh yeah because there was an island wasn't there i forgot what it's called now but it was there's an island that disappears and comes back every so many years too and yes. story of a disappearing island where you can get lost it's like seven years or ten years or something like that where people have shipwrecked on it and then can't get off until the island comes back and it's like, okay. Yeah. For sure. But yep, it was kind of entertaining to say the least. Amazing. I think it's called High Brazil. Is that right? High Brazil? I remember. Yeah. Yeah, because it's on, sorry. Yeah, it's on very old maps. You know, the very, very old maps where people look and they're like, oh, well, we have. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Uh, where uh, oh yeah because they they've got antarctica on these really old maps then like oh, yeah the pure saying, well, map is fabulous isn't it yeah and they can see yeah. it under the ice on the pure reese map and you're like uh, um hello how did that happen yeah um, exactly and like historians are saying oh no people couldn't have known about <laughs> antarctica now, they, now they've confirmed that those things are there under the ice under like 20 miles of ice or whatever it is yeah. it's like yeah i always thought i like an anachronistic archaeology yeah me too but yeah i like that yep you know um looking beyond what the set kind of form there is for looking at history and thinking outside the box right Definitely. yeah oh it's been great speaking to you and um yeah i will share all your details in the comments the description for this chat for this episode and i think this will go out in around halloween time october Ooh, yeah I'm, i was sitting here and, yeah this needs to go out at halloween <laughs> that's right yay yes i mean yeah. which is new year sounds yeah. like a good yeah so All wish right. you well and i keep you in touch well. through your wonderful patron and other places uh Shifra and um thanks for being a wonderful guest no thank you for wanting to do this and this has been lots of fun I've really enjoyed yeah. it yeah I've enjoyed it too it's been fantastic okay bye for now I'll bye. stop recording <laughs>